If you're a Pixel Watch owner, then you should know the month of March has been a big one for you as there's been a lot of change to the Pixel Watch devices as of late. Not only did we get the March feature drop that brought a handful of new features to all three generations of Pixel Watch, but we also got the big Wear OS 5.1 update that brings a small handful of changes that I wanted to briefly put on your radar. We did cover some of this in our recent Pixel Update Bulletin, but I wanted to create a more focused, dedicated video for those of you out there that are specifically interested in Wear OS. So real quick, let's go over everything new in Wear OS 5.1 so you're well aware of the new additions. And of course, if you appreciate content like this, please consider subscribing to the 9to5 Google YouTube channel as we have a lot more Google slash Android content coming your way. And trust me, you do not want to miss out on any of it. Before we get started, it is worth noting this is the first update we've seen in over four months since Wear OS 5 was initially released back in November. With the next update for the Pixel Watch expected to arrive sometime in June as Google seems to be sticking with their quarterly update schedule, just something to keep in mind. That said, let's go over everything new in Wear OS 5.1, starting with the more obvious user-facing changes. From the start, there are some bigger tweaks that you should notice immediately. One of these being a change in the default operating system accent color. For the most part, this accent color primarily shows up in a ton of toggles within the settings app of the OS. Previously, these toggles displayed a yellow accent, but from here on out, it's changed to a more neutral gray color. For now, this is a cosmetic change at best, but as I mentioned in the Pixel Update Bulletin video, I'm really hoping this is a precursor to proper dynamic color support. Hopefully, this comes in the form of having your watch's color scheme adapt to match the main colors of your watch face, or even being able to set your own system default color. Either of those options would be great additions in my book. We also saw the introduction of modes carried over from the Android 15 QPR2 update. Functionally, on the Pixel Watch, there isn't a massive change by any means. You can find this in the settings app, and what Google has essentially done is consolidated the do not disturb bedtime mode and theater mode all under the broader modes menu. Hopefully in the future, some of those custom modes that you create on your pixel phone will also appear on the watch as that would be incredibly useful. Next up is a relatively significant change, the addition of the force global always on display experience toggle. Interestingly enough, this is actually a developer option within Wear OS 5.1. This means you'll need to enable the developer options menu by going to the settings system about then versions tab and tapping on the build number multiple times until a confirmation message appears where you can then head into the new developer options tab to turn on the setting. Once enabled, this feature will keep the display visible within whatever application you're using, especially when you lower your wrist. Right now, if you lower your wrist while inside an app, you get a blurred screen showing the current time. With the Force Global AOD experience turned on, that interaction goes away maintaining constant visibility while inside apps. Truthfully, I can't can't think of a ton of scenarios where someone would have this enabled all the time. Maybe if you need constant, quick access to specific apps like the clock or reminders, for example, it could be helpful there. Otherwise, it's very likely to be a significant battery drain with limited benefit. Still, I'm glad the option exists and it's a welcomed addition nonetheless. Another small visual change is an update to the first party active watch face. The digital clock portion is now surrounded by a pill-shaped container when and always on display mode and the numbers themselves are now solid. Before this update, the numbers were hollowed out and there wasn't really a clear visual indicator to draw attention to the time, and hopefully this change at least improves visibility a little bit. Next up is a more minor change I haven't seen discussed much, and honestly, I'm not entirely sure if this is specifically part of Wear OS 5.1, but I did notice right after the update, there are now these little icons that appear above the tiles when you swipe left and right, and lastly, the Pixel Watch 1's font has been corrected to Google Sans. Back in November, which was the previous update, it was accidentally updated to the Roboto font, so this is simply a small change that rectifies that issue. Now, let's move on to a small handful of changes that are more focused on the developer side of things. One of these features is called Credential Manager Support. This is an API designed to simplify the sign-in process for apps on your Pixel Watch. It does support various sign-in methods, including passwords, pass keys, and federated identity options like sign-in with Google, for example. Or in more simpler terms, this feature will allow a user's credentials to be stored within Google Google's credential provider to facilitate easier logins. If you want to check it out for yourself, head into the settings app where you should see a new passwords tab. At this time, there isn't really too much to interact with, but it's there if you do want to explore. And another developer focused feature is called Watch Speaker Playback. That gives developers the option to allow users to select the watch speaker as a source of audio output. As of March 19th, no apps have been updated to actually take advantage of this, and unfortunately, developers will have to manually update their apps 
apps to enable support for this feature. To be honest, I'm not entirely sure what use cases there would be to utilize the watch speaker within apps, maybe for playing music during runs, providing quick updates in news apps maybe, or perhaps listening back to voice memos. Either way, it will be something that's nice to have available when you do actually need it. The next big question we should be asking here is when you can get your hands on this update. Thankfully, the update as a whole is available to the Pixel Watch 1, 2, and 3. However, interestingly enough, the rollout has been staggered this time around. As of March 19th, the Wi-Fi only versions of the Pixel Watch 1, 2, and 3 should have received the update immediately. The LTE models were delayed, possibly due to carrier certification, but at the time of this video's release, it should be available as well. If you haven't received it yet, you can try and force the update by tapping the Your Watches Up to Date text in the Systems Updates tab. And of course, while new updates are always welcome, there has been some bugs introduced that I wanted to bring to your attention. It's nothing catastrophic by any means, but it is important to be aware of. From what we've seen so far, there have been reports of delayed or missing notifications after updating to Wear OS 5.1, an annoying issue that I've seen quite a bit of discourse over lately, especially on Reddit. There have also been some reports of other strange issues like editing the watch faces, causing a system crash, Fitbit syncing, not being up to speed, and instances where the touchscreen freezes. At this time, it doesn't appear that a factory reset will resolve these problems, so this is something we may have to wait for in order to see a resolution. On my end, I've been using the Pixel Watch 3 on and off for a few days since the update, and it seems pretty stable so far. Formance seems good, and battery life seems on par with what I've been experiencing before, so take that as you will, but it doesn't hurt to wait and see if we get any hot fixes within the next few weeks. And that, my friends, is everything new with Wear OS 5.1. It's a decent size update that refreshes the Wear OS experience and lays down some solid groundwork for what should become even more and lays down some solid groundwork that should become even more useful as app developers begin to take advantage of the new APIs. And keep in mind, this update also follows the March feature drop, which has its own set of changes. We already did cover those in depth, but I'll leave a link down below to the 9to5 Google website if you want more information. With that said, let me know what you think of the update so far. Are you happy with these new features and additions? And if you did update to Wear OS 5.1, how is it running for you? Have you encountered any issues? Please leave a comment and let me know your thoughts down below. In the meantime, I'm getting out of here, but before I do, a huge shout out to our channel members on screen right now. Simply put, we greatly appreciate your support and please don't forget to grab the latest wallpaper pack Interstellar in the community post. If you're not a channel member and want to gain access for yourself, consider picking up a channel membership as you'll also gain access to our massive backlog of wallpapers from our previous months. Until next time, this has been Jordan Floyd from 9to5Google. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.